Greetings my friends, this is Jared from Fanboys Forever, and today we have a really special review for you. We're actually going to be looking at both He-Man and Skeletor from the new Masters of the Universe Origins line. So what exactly is Masters of the Universe Origins, and how does it compare to what Mattel has done in previous years with the brand? This is basically a line that is it's internal at Mattel with a little bit of input from what I understand from the Horsemen. And it's basically a line that takes the original toys, and here I have my original battle armor He-Man here to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. It takes those almost squat, like wrestler-like proportions, and it transitions them into more of a modern look with some modern articulation, so on and so forth. You can only find these at Walmart so far, at least in the United States. That's the only place you can find them. And I finally found them at my local Walmart, so please don't pay scalper prices. Get out there and look, and I, I really believe that you're going to run into these guys. So just be patient. Uh, I am very excited because Mattel says that these are going to be a wide release line come next year. So if Walmart exclusives kind of dampen it for you, then don't worry. It's going to be available everywhere come next year. So let's go ahead and have a look at the packaging. We'll start out with He-Man himself. Here we have He-Man. We have our brand new packaging. We have the new for 20 I, uh, we also have modern posing retro play over here, and I believe that these are mostly put on here uh, to kind of differentiate these from an original product. Of course, it should be pretty obvious with the sculpt, but I, I kind of think that's why uh, that that ends up on there. I love this card art. As a matter of fact, I was really hoping that at some point that they would transition the Masters of the Universe Classics cards over to something like this. Now, they never did. They said it was because they wanted to keep it consistent with the original green brick uh, look. So I understand why they didn't, but man, this is really nice. Absolutely love it. You have the Mattel logo down here. And on the back, this is actually where the real star of the show is, because look at that art. They have gotten some terrific artists to come in and just absolutely blow away uh, this artwork. Even the old, uh, well, here it's a six-back, not an eight-back. But even the old uh, artwork that they would have down here to show you what the figures do, I mean, it looks terrific. There's almost kind of a, um, a painterly quality to it. So I have no complaints about any of that. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it includes a comic book, and I'm very curious about what exactly that entails. So I'm sure we'll be finding out soon. Now having a look at Skeletor, we have the exact same front card going on here. New for 20, the retro play thing. On the back, we also have some incredible artwork for Skeletor. Matter of fact, I may like Skeletor's artwork just a little bit better than He-Man's. So uh, it kind of reminds me of the end of the 1987 Dolph Lundgren Masters of the Universe movie, where Frank Langella's Skeletor, like, you know, he falls into the giant pit. That's what it reminds me of, anyway. Uh, so we have a little blurb about what Masters of the Universe Origins is on the back. And, of course, we have that six back back there. So really awesome stuff. Let's start out with the most powerful man in the universe. E-Man. We'll free him from his plastic prison. These are so great on card that if I were to ever find another set, you know, maybe one of these days when they're a little more plentiful, I will probably grab it just to keep on card. So here's something interesting to note. I don't know if it's like this for other samples, but my mini comic has actually been sealed into the glue right here. So the mini comic is stuck both ways right here. It's stuck on the back and it's stuck on the front so I'll probably have to kind of rip it yeah just a little bit it's okay because I think that Skeletor comes with the exact same one but it's kind of a shame that that happens so watch out for that Mattel all right and here we have He-Man all battle ready with all of his accessories uh, so far I am really loving the feel of this guy uh, have you ever just held a toy and it actually feels substantial well, that's what this guy feels like. There's, it actually feels like a little bit of weight uh, in your hands. Matter of fact, if I compared it with the weight that you would feel from the original Masters figures, they have a very similar feel in terms of weight distribution. The new one may be just slightly heavier feeling. Let's start by taking a close look at the sculpt. Uh, here we have He-Man's brand new head sculpt, uh, which is quite different from the original He-Man. We can see that with the original, uh, it's more of a close haircut, I guess you would say. Uh, certainly less long and flowy like the new one is. And that's fine. It's just a, a different kind of look. This reminds me more of like some of the older mini-comics, uh, where He-Man's hair was a little more long 
So I love all of the sculpting on the hair up here. Uh, it's very nice. It has uh, lots of little lines sculpted into it. it kind of just flows. So I really like that. Uh, I really do like the expression on the face. It kind of goes with that same look with the original where he's uh, kind of, it almost looks like he's wincing a little bit. So I really like that. Uh, the paint is nice on the face. There really isn't too much you can mess up on since He-Man's face is literally uh, a couple of dots and some eyebrows <laughs> and some white teeth. The rest of it is just the colors of the plastic. Uh, would it have been even nicer with a little wash on the hair? Yeah, but I mean, you know, if you want to put a little brown wash in the hair, I mean, that would be easy enough for most adult collectors. So uh, that, that might be the one thing I would say it could benefit from. We'll just have a quick look at the back here. You can see the hair sculpt kind of continues back there and on the top of the head. So yeah, I think the head sculpt looks nice. I've heard some people say it's more like uh, Sean Penn from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. <laughs> so uh, we're like an Owen Wilson kind of look. I really like it. I think it's nice. But do I like the original head sculpt better? Yeah, I do. Uh, as a matter of fact, when they did their Prince Adam and He-Man collector set that they did a while back, uh, with that exclusive, I actually liked that original head that it came with better. But they just announced the Battle Armor He-Man that they're going to be doing for Origins that actually does include that same head sculpt. And, of course, the heads are completely swappable. So you give it a pull, and it comes off pretty easy. But it's on there pretty firmly as well. So it's a good middle ground. Kind of like those uh, original Masters of the Universe classics, uh, how they could swap their heads pretty easily. So yeah, really nice. Moving on down, we have the Iron Cross logo right here. And that looks really good. We have the squares on the armor. And moving down to the belt, looks really nice as well. And the furry loincloth, or furry underwear, I guess. It's more of underwear. Down here, the boots are quite nice as well. They have all the little bands sculpted into them, just like the original, like you remember. For the arms, we actually have the little bracelets that have the little circles. I love the proportions on these guys. That's something they really got right here. I'll just turn them around. You can see I have the sword in the back. I'll move it so you can see the sculpt a little bit better. He does have a sheath for the sword. The copyright information is right down there. And then we have the back of the legs, bottoms of the feet. Everything has a nice uh, even paint job, especially for like a mass market toy. You can see that there's really not very much slop. Uh, the closest I had to really slop on the figure was on the back with uh, a little bit of the squares. You can see that they're not exactly perfectly painted for a couple of them there. But where it's on the back, I mean, you'll never really see it. And the important thing to me is the head sculpt and the face and the uh, chest area with the harness. So really the paint's quite nice. There's just not much of it. Uh, it's mostly just plastic doing the heavy lifting here. But really, I think that those bright primary colors really do a lot for it. We'll have a look at accessories very quickly. Uh, we have He-Man's Battle Axe. Uh, this is one accessory that I feel like they could have done a little bit more with, especially in terms of paint. It would have been great. You see that sculpting line right in there? It would have been awesome if they could have had like a lighter silver paint on the ends. But unfortunately, they don't do that. It's just kind of a plain Jane sort of looking. Uh, but I really do like the sculpt on it, and He-Man holds it perfectly. So I always appreciate it when the company can make an accessory that you can hold with ease. Also, we have the Battle Shield here and it looks great as well. And on here, we can see that this is how it goes in. There's a clamp up here for the wrist, and there's almost like a handle for the hand that the hand just kind of glides into. And I think it could work with either hand. And we also have the harness as kind of an accessory as well. All of this stuff is removable. You can see that back here, there's like a square peg. You just pull, and you can take it right off. All you have to do is just kind of pull it down and you'll notice that this doesn't really come apart right here. Uh, instead, you're kind of left trying to get it down uh, below the leg. And so you might be thinking, okay, well, what do I do? Well, this brings me to the next great point about this figure. They're totally modular. Every piece on He-Man can come apart, and it's not broken. It's actually supposed to. So you can mix and match everything from the torsos to the legs to the boots. You name it, it comes apart. And pretty uh, easily, too, but not so easily that it's going to come apart while you're playing with the thing. So this is fantastic. And, of course, there's a whole other toy line that Mattel has already been working on for the past year uh, that can do the exact same thing and shares a lot of the same sculpts. And we'll get into that later. So here's He-Man with the Dolph Lundgren finale look, as I like to call it, from the 87 movie. So this is him without the harness. Next, we'll talk about He-Man's sword. I love the sculpt that they went for on this thing. It looks, you know, perfect to the original cartoon. 
and uh, and the original toy. It's just kind of like a happy medium between the two. It's got his funny like uh, handle guard right there, the, and uh, I, I really like it. But there is one drawback. Like uh, the original toy line, it is a half sword, and so that means it's going to look great from one angle, but not so great from the other. And of course, later when we get Skeletor, we'll clip them together. But I do think that that is the one big accessory that's definitely missing on Mattel's part, that they should have included a sword that was whole, just like Masters of the Universe Classics used to. Accessories off, we can definitely show you the articulation a little bit more clearly. See that his arm goes up about that much, so it can go out to pretty much a 90 degree angle to his chest. It can go in about that much. And we can see that there is a swivel here at the elbow, and it can go all the way around. You can bring it up about that much because it's just single jointed, so you can get He-Man checking out his muscles right here. Or you can bring it down all the way like this. And there is a hinge at his wrist. And the same goes for the other wrist, of course. He-Man's head gets a whole lot of range. Actually more than I thought he would. He can look down quite a ways. He can look up quite a ways. And I really like that. You can even get those kind of inquisitive head turns to the side. There is no abdomen articulation, but he does have a cut at the torso, so he can go all the way around with that. Since it's removable, you know, it's going to be there anyway. Uh, with the legs, they get plenty of clearance for the hips. So, you can get him to go pretty far out. And you can bring him all the way back down, of course. There's no cut up here. And then down here, we actually do have a swivel at the knee and then we can bring it in and it's single jointed but you know you couldn't do much else with the sculpt without breaking up the sculpt so I think that looks plenty good enough for the purposes of this figure and then <clears throat> the biggest surprise to me were the ankle joints now of course we do have a cut up here at the boot because they're removable but with the ankle joints I thought it would just be a hinge and I didn't think it would be a very good one but it is a very well constructed hinge it holds poses really well it can go really far both ways and the biggest surprise of all is these are ankle rockers so you can actually get him to go all the way around you can get him to hold all kinds of crazy poses you get him to practically do the splits and he would hold that pose you can take him like this and because of those ankle rockers he can hold that pose no problem no adjustment necessary so I have to say I'm pretty impressed with that uh, no wonder people are crazy over these things but anyway though uh, the articulation is more than acceptable for these guys, especially with those ankle rockers. All right, next up, we have Skeletor. Here's hoping we can get him open without totally mangling the mini-comic inside, and we'll go from there. Ah, oh, there we go. That's how the mini-comic is supposed to come out of the packaging. As promised, we'll now have a look at the mini-comic. It's called Beast Barrage. Always oh, nice to have a little bit of alliteration going on, right? So we have Beast Man back there. We have some Shadow Beasts, and we have He-Man himself. The artwork looks really nice. I'm not actually 100% sure who did this, but it is in a beautiful, beautiful style. Kind of looks like a cross between the old uh, Filmation cartoon and the 2000X Seaman series. So we just, uh, yeah, plain and simple. Uh, I'll have to read this afterwards, but it, it certainly looks great. And uh, I think it's awesome that they came with a legit, real deal mini comic. And that's what people had been asking for for years. And this is a great way for kids to learn a little bit more about some of these characters. And here we have good old Uncle Keldor himself, Skeletor. And we can see that, uh, just like He-Man, he retains so much of that vintage personality with the sculpt, with the way everything's laid out and the proportions to the body. And uh, I think that's great. Just like with He-Man, we have a brand new head sculpt to talk about. And much like He-Man, they decided to try something a little different. And uh, like He-Man, in some ways, it's a swing and a miss. Um, you know, I really like it uh, from a lot of angles. But from many angles, like this one is perfect. Like you can have him, you know, kind of put his head down and he looks really quite sinister. But, you know, as soon as he puts his head back, he looks horrified. <laughs> he looks surprised. He, but, I, you know, I think that throughout this line, and we're already seeing it with the battle armor Skeletor and things that they've shown, uh, we're going to have several different Skeletor head sculpts. So if this expression in particular doesn't really do it for you, you know, and it doesn't really necessarily do it for me, but there's going to be such variety that this will be one that you can use for the ah what you know a bit foiled ah or just like the artwork on the back like him falling like into a pit you know and the ah so I 
I guess that that's what they were going for. I guess what I'm trying to say is for the first Skeletor figure, I probably would have went with something much more uh, neutral. But, you know, that's fine. It's uh, hopefully going to be a long, healthy line, and hopefully we will get many, many variations. I, I still like it, and it's still certainly, in terms of sculpt and paint, returns, uh, retains a whole lot of personality of that original toy. Well, the articulation is exactly the same as He-Man, so we're not going to focus on any of that. Instead, we are going to look at the sculpt as we go through. We have his awesome kind of bat uh, chest harness to eat your heart out, Batman. And then down here, we have a little symbol on his belt with the ram's head, just like the staff. And we kind of have the loincloth that sort of reminds me a little bit of the uh, 2000X design. On the sides, we have the awesome little shoulder pads. And then moving on down, the only other unique sculpting compared to He-Man are uh, Skeletor's funny like lizard man boots so that's really cool moving on to his accessories we have his havoc staff here and skeletor has the ram's head on top and it's actually very well sculpted uh, there's lots of little details in there and i think it really makes good on the original the implied details the original moving down is just one solid piece we kind of have the dumbbell down there it's slightly warped out of package but nothing that a little hot water and then a rinse and cold can't uh, fix and then we have Skeletor sword it's the exact same sculpt as He-Man's side of the power sword and then going to the back just so we can see back there he actually doesn't have a sheath uh, for his sword and I think that's really strange actually um, I don't think that it would have hurt anything to have just included an extra little loop for the sword and I think it's kind of weird that they didn't actually uh, I also think this would have been a cool opportunity to have had the kind of top part of his armor go all the way around because they could have easily done it. Uh, you just would have had to have popped off Skeletor's head to be able to change it out. And speaking of popping body parts off, Skeletor can easily pop apart just like He-Man. And you can actually remove his loincloth and under it you can see a black version of He-Man's. So, you know, you can get some really crazy combinations. All right, it is time for a few comparisons height-wise. And we're just going to show you how some of the other He-Man toys look alongside these guys. So with He-Man himself, let's just start out with the most obvious of all. And that is one of the original He-Man figures. I have my old original battle armor He-Man that I grew up with. And uh, I'm just going to put him right here. So he can't really stand too well on his own these days. But as you can see, they're almost exactly the same height. And of course, the sculpt similarities really bring it all together. Next up. We have the next evolution of He-Man, that was the New Adventures. Here we have a basic New Adventures He-Man. Uh, he too is pretty old at this point, and uh, try to get him to stand if at all possible. These guys still retain some of that squat kind of posing, and uh, they look actually decent together, I suppose. Won't it be wild if Mattel ever gets around to doing like New Adventures of He-Man figures in this style? <laughs> I, I really don't think they will, but you know what? Surprise me. I would buy all of them. I'd be very happy. All right, we're still moving through history here with He-Man, and now we're going to have a 2000X He-Man from the Horseman's First Masters line, and you can see that he's taller, but certainly not as bulked out. So, All right, here's my go-to kind of uh, classic He-Man that I use from the Masters of the Universe Classics days, still my favorite toy line of all time and they look really interesting together but they certainly don't match each other in any kind of style uh the harness might be the closest thing and it's funny because you could probably switch those harnesses out and it would probably work and finally we have the most recent he-man that was released before the origins stuff came out and that is our Dolph lundgren movie he-man uh i absolutely love this guy i'm such a huge fan of that old movie so this is a very very funny sight uh, to see, they certainly don't go together very well stylistically, but hey, I mean, it's, it's neat that they're both somehow the same character. Let's look at some Skeletors through the ages. I don't have an original Skeletor on hand uh, to compare very quickly, so let's just skip ahead to the 2000X uh, version of Skeletor, which is, I think, one of the greatest action figure sculpts of all time. Uh, it's kind of funny because they're sort of similar in height because of how bent their <laughs> both of their knees are. Uh, but you have a gigantic head here and a very small head here. So it's really funny to see them together and imagine that they're supposed to be the same character or representing the same character. And here we have our Masters of the Universe Classics Skeletor. 
they look kind of funny together. Uh, certainly some, uh, certainly some similarity in the colors on the heads. Of course, we can't forget about Frank Langella Skeletor from the 87 movie, the most recent Skeletor release before Mattel kind of took back over with Origins. Get his legs planted there. It is very funny, like I said with Dolph, to imagine that they're supposed to be the same character, but somehow they are. And don't forget, one of the greatest action figures of the past five years, God Mode Skeletor from the end of the 87 movie when he gets the power of Grayskull, uh, like, goodness. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's right, but if that's wrong, I don't want to be right. There's really one more comparison that I think would be appropriate to make with both He-Man and Skeletor, and that is with the most famous Masters of the Universe character of all. You know, maybe you've guessed it. Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Uh, it's like I alluded to earlier. Mattel has certainly been doing this Masters of the WWE Universe line for the past year. And everybody's known that they were, it was the same sculpting that they saw in that two-pack with Prince Adam and He-Man. So all of these parts are completely interchangeable, and you can do some crazy things. If it has always been your heart's desire for Macho Man Randy Savage to wield the power sword of Eternia, then Mattel has made that very possible for you. <laughs> so that is something that you can do. If you've always wondered what it would look like if He-Man was wearing orange uh, Speedos with stars on them, Mattel has also made that possible for you. If you ever wondered what would happen if He-Man himself became inundated with Macho Mania, this is, <laughs> this is a thing you can do, thanks to Mattel. <laughs> and if you're into unholy abominations, Mattel has also made this very possible. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. And if you want to see the two halves of the Power Sword reunited before both good and evil as the original story had, just take these and they clip together. They press together and they actually stay together fairly decently. But just like the Masters of the Universe Classics uh, version of the same sword, you can see that it kind of splits at the top. Uh, so that's always kind of irritating. I always wish that there was more of a connector up here instead. You know, I'm just not the biggest fan in the world of a two-tone like colored power sword. Uh, I think it's fine, especially if they release, you know, like a solid version. And who knows, maybe that new Battle Armor He-Man, you know, had a solid version with it, and I just haven't noticed yet. Um, I'm not really sure. But, you know, you can do that. So here's something fun that I've been anxious to try. We can. I don't have the brand new Battle Cat. I've not been able to find one just yet that's a Walmart exclusive like these are. So instead, I have the Masters of the Universe Classics Battle Cat. And I'm just going to put them right here. And let's see if this new He-Man uh, kind of scales well enough to where he can just be right on there. And yeah, <laughs> actually, I'll be 100% with you guys. Uh, I think he sets on the saddle better than an actual Classics figure <laughs> would. I, man, that's a shocker. Well, how about that? Okay, well, that answers that question. And we'll look at the same thing for Panthor here with Skeletor. And, of course, just like He-Man, he fits on there perfectly. And no, that was not a purr pun. <laughs> Another kind of funny question I had with these guys is, can you take a Masters Classics figure and, like, head swap with those? So let's find out. And let's see if it can go on there. Uh, you know, not really. He just kind of sets on there because this ball peg isn't up high enough, but it does kind of go into that groove and it can just set on there and it actually doesn't look half bad, but I am curious about the other way around. And much to my shock, uh, <laughs> it's actually a perfect uh, fit on there. <laughs> it's a little tight, but wow, okay. So these are sort of modular with Masters of the Universe Classics. Uh, color me shocked once again. <laughs> Actually, it looks terrific. Wow, cool. Another curiosity I have is how well will these scale with the Masters of the Universe Classics Castle Grayskull playset. Turns out really well. You can see the Skeletor looks great in there. And the, the scale is really perfect for He-Man as well down here. It really looks pretty good once you put them in the playset. The foot pegs are actually the right size for any Masters of the Universe Classics foot pegs. So you can actually take like this right here, and the foot goes in it no problem. 
So I don't know if a lot of that is intentional or what, but it is interesting that so many of the features of the Classics figures uh, are able to kind of be implemented with these figures. So in the end, I'm just really glad that these exist. Uh, Mattel has tried something really quite novel compared to the other big competitors right now, particularly Hasbro, who are really capitalizing on vintage product being reissued at Walmart. And instead of doing straight issue, reissues like Hasbro has done, they have opted to completely and utterly re-engineer their original He-Man figures and update them with modern articulation. I don't know about you, but it would blow my mind if I were to look at one of Hasbro's like reissue Empire Strikes Back figures and see that Luke has like, you know, ball jointed hips and double elbows. I mean, it would be crazy. And here we have Mattel doing that very thing and just deciding that instead of reissuing their old product like they did at Toys R Us back in the day, uh, they just decided to go for it and make not only a line that is totally re-engineered, but one that is completely modular. In other words, you can switch all of the parts with each other. And I don't know if, uh, if it's just me, but that kind of blows my mind. <laughs> like, I, I don't even really know what to think about that. It creates kind of a play pattern for these figures, and especially with the huge crossover potential with the Masters of the WWE Universe figures. That just, I, I think it really opens up a whole nother level of playability and interest from collectors of all kinds, and I think that's why these guys are selling out everywhere. But like I said, don't give in to the scalper prices, just wait it out. I have a feeling these guys will be readily available with just a little bit of patience. You should be able to find them at your local store, and if not in the next month or so, then shortly after that, as these will soon not be a Walmart exclusive. Anybody who wants them can get them. They'll be all over the place. And you know what? I really do think Mattel has a winner here. I think kids are going to love these. I certainly think that, you know, a 30 or 40 year old man, uh, which is the demographic, you know, that I would fall into. Uh, I think, you know, you see something like this in the store and that classic packaging uh, and just the actual sculpt and design of the product itself is incredibly appealing. And with the myriad of characters that they've already announced, I think Mattel has a winning combination here, and I think that that's going to be reflected in just how much uh, stock that they really sell off of these things. I have to say, Mattel, these are really nice. I didn't really think I'd be into them as much as I am, so kudos to you guys. You, you guys definitely cracked it. You figured out uh, what we would enjoy seeing. Um, on the other side of things, do I wish that the head sculpts were a little closer to the originals? Yeah, I, I think they might have strayed just a little too far and into their own kind of preferences for the characters there. So it would be nice, you know, and I think they're doing that future releases. I think they're kind of going back a little bit and saying, okay, maybe we went a little too far uh, in some other directions with these guys. Um, do I wish that these were Masters of the Universe Classics figures on the shelves? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Um, you know, but that's the curse of loving a line so much and really being into something like that so much is that, you know, when something else comes around, it, it is hard uh, to deal with that kind of changeover. But you know what? I'm glad that these exist. I know that there are many, many, many people out there who are waiting on the kind of classical uh, masters figures to come back in vogue. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, that these definitely scratch that itch. So I really do appreciate you guys watching. As always, like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our videos. And I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. God bless.